Have you ever imagined a chip without silicon? Well, for the first time, engineers have crafted a fully functional processor without a single grain of silicon. And the best part, it works. And it could be the fastest, most efficient chip we've ever seen. Sounds like science fiction, right? But this is real science, and it's about to change everything. Since the 1960s, silicon has been the foundation of our technology. From computers and cell phones, to satellites, rockets, even smart fridges and coffee makers. But here's the thing, silicon has hit its limit. This isn't about evolution anymore, it's about the laws of physics, quantum mechanics at play. We've reached the point where atoms stop following the rules. At this critical moment, a heavy, colourful crystal, almost like a piece of psychedelic art, caught the attention of scientists. As chip miniaturization reached a breaking point, electrons started passing through walls. Today, we're working at 3 nanometer scales, soon to be 2 and then even smaller. But here's the catch. At these sizes, traditional electronics begin to defy their own rules. Transistors, the tiny switches that control signals on chips, are now so small they behave like quantum systems. And that changes everything. Picture trying to close a door, but the wind still blows through. That's what happens with electrons. They begin to tunnel through barriers, a phenomenon called quantum tunneling, where particles slip through walls that should be solid. It's like walking straight through a wall. Inside a chip, this means losing control of signals, leaking currents, scrambled data, and a huge hit to performance. This quantum limit is what's threatening to silence silicon. No matter how advanced the engineering gets, nature is putting the brakes on it. That's when scientists turned their attention to something new, something that not only replaces silicon, but could open entirely new possibilities. And that's when an old element from the periodic table started to shine. Bismuth. At first glance, it looks like a strange laboratory ornament, a heavy metal with bizarre geometric shapes and an almost psychedelic glow. But behind its eccentric appearance lies atomic behavior that challenges everything we know about semiconductors. Bismuth has a rare and powerful property, an extremely strong spin-orbit coupling. In simpler terms, the spin of electrons, this quantum property that gives them a kind of rotation, is tightly linked to their movement around the nucleus, and that opens the door to something revolutionary. While silicon controls electrons purely by charge, bismuth can control both charge and spin. And that's a game changer. Instead of just switching a current on and off, we're now talking about chip scale quantum processing. This could lead to entirely new types of transistors, memories, and even qubits. But there was a challenge. Bismuth, naturally, has no band gap, which makes it behave like a metal. Without a band gap, there's no switching, and without switching, there's no computational logic. So, was that the end of the road? Not quite. There's a solution, doping. By introducing specific chemical elements to bismuth, its electronic structure can be altered. And that's exactly what a team of Chinese researchers did. They successfully created for the first time a functional bismuth-based semiconductor, the first silicon-free chip in history. This achievement occurred in a lab at Peking University and was documented in a nature study. The researchers took bismuth already doped with telluride and meticulously built the chip layer by layer. But they didn't just stop there. This wasn't merely a proof of concept. The chip was constructed at an engineering scale even smaller than 2 nanometers, pushing into a realm where components are measured in units smaller than a silicon atom. To give you perspective, some parts of the transistor are only 0.5 nanometers thick. This is precisely where silicon starts to falter, because below 3 nanometers, quantum effects begin to disrupt everything. But with bismuth, those barriers seemed to vanish. Even more impressively, tests showed that this bismuth-doped chip could operate at frequencies above 500 gigahertz. While the high-end chips from Intel, Apple and Samsung barely break 5 to 6 gigahertz, this new prototype exceeds 500 gigahertz, and it continues to grow. It also uses three times less power and boasts a 40% faster switching speed. When compared with real transistors from Intel, 
TSMC, and Samsung, the bismuth chip triumphed in every aspect. Graphene, the unseen thread shaping the next generation. But bismuth wasn't alone in this breakthrough. To connect the transistors in this new chip, engineers turned to graphene, the thinnest, lightest, and strongest material ever discovered. It's an incredibly efficient conductor, enabling the creation of microscopic connections with almost zero energy loss. The outcome? A chip completely free of silicon, featuring bismuth transistors and graphene interconnects. Every layer was crafted with atomic precision, every detail meticulously designed for a future beyond silicon. But building it? That's where the real challenge lies. The architecture they used is called Gate Around, where the transistor channels are fully enclosed by a control electrode, requiring precision engineering to the millimeter. Picture this. Constructing a sheet only 0.5 nanometers thick, then wrapping it in another sheet just as thin, without even being able to see the underside. Such precision was achieved by layering bismuth and graphene one atop the other until they stacked four transistors into a single block. To ensure the chip's performance wasn't compromised, it was mounted on a silicon base, but only for mechanical support. Not a single active part of the chip uses silicon. It's like watching the birth of an entirely new kind of electronics, where vibrant crystals and pure carbon step in to replace what has powered the world for decades. The race for the next generation chip has already begun, and the results are undeniable. The bismuth chip has proven itself superior, outpacing the world's biggest manufacturers in three key areas – speed, energy efficiency, and control over electrical leakage. These three factors will shape the future of processes, and more importantly, they'll decide who will lead the next digital revolution. Right now, China is ahead of the pack. The groundbreaking study came from Peking University, and China holds over 70% of the world's bismuth reserves, a resource once considered a curiosity, but now positioned as a strategic goldmine. What does this mean? Simply put, if this type of chip scales up, Whoever controls bismuth will control the next leap in computing. It's no coincidence that tech giants like TSMC are already making moves. In collaboration with MIT and National Taiwan University, TSMC is now testing bismuth as a material for next-generation transistors. This signals a shift that's already in motion, one that's irreversible. Historically, this kind of transformation has always been driven by new materials, just like it was with copper, silicon, and germanium. And now, it's bismuth's turn. While engineers are reimagining the very foundation of hardware, another revolution is unfolding in software, the rise of artificial intelligence as a powerful tool for creation, analysis, and automation. If you haven't started mastering these tools yet, you're not just losing time, you're missing out on opportunities. The AI course, the new gold of the internet, teaches you how to use AI to generate income, create content, build systems, and fast track your projects, even if you've never written a line of code. By subscribing, you'll not only gain in-depth knowledge, but you'll also be supporting the channel directly. The post-silicon era has already begun, but it's still trapped in the lab. Despite all the progress, we're not yet looking at a product ready for the mainstream. The bismuth chip is still a prototype, functional, exceeding expectations, but it's not yet backed by a fully mature ecosystem. Creating high-purity doped bismuth, layering it with atomic precision, and aligning graphene on an industrial scale are all challenges that remain. We're a long way from the robustness of the silicon production chain. Silicon has decades of standardization, specialized equipment, suppliers, and optimized factories. Bismuth, on the other hand, is still in its early stages. Adapting to this new reality would require new machines, new processes, and perhaps entirely new factories, an expensive and time-consuming task. But the signal has been sent, and like every major shift in history, this one will start small, confined to research centers and military prototypes until someone figures out how to scale it. 
When that moment arrives, the market will change as drastically as it did when we transitioned from vacuum tubes to transistors. The real question now isn't if silicon will be replaced, it's who will be the first to turn this new technology into an industrial powerhouse. The future is being shaped in crystals and atoms, bismuth, graphene, vertical architectures, and frequencies beyond 500 gigahertz. This isn't just a gradual evolution. We're witnessing the dawn of an entirely new paradigm. Just as silicon replaced germanium and chips took over from vacuum tubes, this new wave of materials could unlock possibilities we can't even imagine yet. Faster, thinner, smarter, and perhaps even more conscious chips are on the horizon. But revolutions never happen in isolation, and no technology is born flawless. The fate of bismuth now hinges on more than just the lab. It's tied to industry, investment, engineering, politics, and time. And perhaps, like with other pivotal moments in history, it will depend on who is most alert when the market's tectonic plates start to shift. So, what do you think? Can silicon really last another decade? Or are we already witnessing the dawn of its replacement? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If this video gave you a fresh perspective, don't forget to like and share. It helps the channel keep delivering content like this. Thank you for watching.